Saturday Night Live ruined Shane Gillis, but made him a star. No, there was a, so many articles. I think I was number one on Twitter for like three straight days. Oh. Just getting f***ing eviscerated. Did you read it all? Oh, I read all of it. Oh. It was just very stressful and like kind of funny when I was just with my friends. If you're even a casual fan of stand-up comedy, you know that within the last few years, Shane Gillis has become one of the most popular comedians working today. At this point, most people are familiar with the fact that the young bull was hired to be a part of the cast at Saturday Night Live, several years ago, but was subsequently fired after a journalist found a video of Shane on a podcast using a slur for Asian people that rhymes with the word drink. Shane received a lot of backlash online for what he said, and a lot of professional Twitter users claim that Shane was a racist who isn't even funny, and that it was a good thing he didn't get Saturday Night Live. What a lot of these retards didn't understand is that it actually would end up being a great thing for Shane, because it got him a lot of attention, and his career went another direction. Bars. With all of this extra notoriety, in due time, the love that Shane Gillis received for his comedy would outnumber the hate tenfold, because it turns out Shane is an incredibly funny and talented stand-up comedian. If you're curious as to how Shane took this negative event and bounced back from it, then you've come to the right place. I will be discussing exactly how Shane handled the situation so well, and what it was that allowed him to transcend his cancellation and become one of the biggest stars in comedy. To get a crystal clear understanding of Shane's journey to the top, we need to first establish a clear timeline of events of what all Shane went through. To begin with, before auditioning for Saturday Night Live in September 2019, Shane was not exactly the household name he is today. He actually describes on the Joe Rogan experience how he was poor and nobody really knew who he was. I was not famous at all. I was poor. And then I got canceled immediately. Like, that was my thing. Like, right. It was you a know, very you didn't different get experience. Famous and then yeah, get canceled. most people that get canceled are, yeah. You got canceled on the way. I got canceled immediately. Yeah. They, they literally were like, how about this guy? And everyone was like, no. So Shane was just a working comic at this time who was still coming up in New York City and building a fan base. He talks about how his agent had asked him about sending in a packet to SNL, but how he wasn't interested in the idea. Then he received another opportunity that was a little better when he was doing Just for Laughs. Listen to this. Do you want to send a packet in for SNL? And I was like, no. I'm not going to be a writer. I'm never going to... I won't work on that show. And then I guess they saw me at JFL and Comedy Central thing, and they were like, we like him, we want him to audition, he can come straight in to audition. So I went straight to the main stage for the audition. So obviously, even before Shane went to audition, the staff at SNL had seen how much potential he had as a young comedian, and they were willing to let him audition for the show without even filling out a packet or sending an audition tape. It seems like they wanted Shane more than he wanted them at the time, which makes the events that transpired even more interesting. If you've seen Shane talk about the audition, you'd know that he did really, really well and that he was called back to meet everybody. And then went back to, you know what I mean? I was like yeah. looking at him. I, I could see they were laughing, and you, I was told the whole time, no one's gonna laugh. They were laughing. I was like, oh, fuck. I did pretty good. Ran into Che that night. I was like, ah, I sucked. I was nervous. He was like, no, you were... That was good. Being the decorated war veteran and young bull that he was, he did stand-up comedy for his audition, which is his bread and butter, and everybody loved it. Then when Shane attends his callback and meets Lorne Michaels, he quickly realizes that he got SNL, and then Lorne calls him and says that he wants him to go straight to the cast of the show in the following season, and that it would be publicly announced the next day. So then upon being announced, Shane talks about how crazy it was to be congratulated by everyone he ever knew, and just how surreal the feeling was of seeing the headlines saying his name and how he'd be joining the cast of Saturday Night Live. And then I go in and meet with Lauren, and he's, he's the man. He's a nice guy. And he was like, I'm going to use you, but I don't know how. The day they announced it, it's a, it, was, it was cool. It was very cool. You hear from everybody you've ever grown up with. They're all like, holy shit. What just, like, I can't believe you're on this. Then within a few hours of this announcement, an article was released about Shane from Variety Magazine about a podcast episode he had done where he used some derogatory terms. For the jokes Shane had said, the article had deemed him all the buzzwords that you probably know in your head, and this radically shifted the narrative around Shane. I won't be showing the podcast that got Shane in trouble here for obvious reasons, but if you look it up on YouTube, it isn't difficult to find. The guy who found the podcast clip of Shane was a fella named Seth Simons. He's an odd-looking duck. Norm MacDonald had this to say about this character, and I think he sums up perfectly how much of a battle axe this Seth Simons guy was. Shane then went back to talk to Lorne Michaels, and Lorne felt like everything could be okay if Shane made it to the first episode, but a lot of people at the time were pushing to have Shane fired from the show upon all the backlash he was receiving. Lorne told him that they needed a response and some type of rationale as to why he said what he said, so Shane went on Twitter and posted this as a response. I'm a comedian who pushes back 
boundaries I sometimes miss. If you go through my 10 years of comedy, most of it is bad. You're going to find a lot of bad misses. I'm happy to apologize to anyone who's actually offended by anything I've said. My intention is never to hurt anyone, but I'm trying to be the best comedian I can be, and sometimes that requires risks. Now, some people may roll their eyes at this response, but Shane has publicly said he regrets saying this as his response, and he feels that it was a corny way to explain himself, and that if he had more time, he would have thought of something less gay. He also said this, I'm a comedian who was funny enough to get SNL. That can't be taken away. Of course, I wanted an opportunity to prove myself at SNL, but I understand it would be too much of a distraction. I respect the decision they made. I'm honestly grateful for the opportunity. I was always a mad TV guy anyway. The statement is true because not a lot of people get the opportunity Shane did in his audition, and then to be accepted when you didn't even really care too much about the outcome must have felt amazing for him. However, for a brief period of time, Shane was getting dragged through the mud by a portion of people who felt that what he was saying was absolutely unacceptable and that his jokes were totally off limits and just hateful. There's actually quite a few people who think Shane was spreading hate and not trying to be funny at all, which is just an absolutely fucking stupid stupid way to look at what he was doing. Obviously, if you don't think it's funny, that's fine, but calling anyone defending his attempt to joke about something you personally have a problem with as right-wing Twitter is just stupid and makes you look disingenuous and full of shit. I'm interested to see what a lot of these retards have to say now that Shane is one of the biggest comedians working. If you're a big fan of comedy, a lot of these tweets and comments might make you roll your eyes, but it's alright because with everything bad that happens, there's always a silver lining. When Shane returned to doing stand-up comedy, he actually went out and said, said, quote, I'm fine with the consequences, but I do want everyone to know that I've been reading every one of my death threats in an Asian accent. <laughs> How do you not laugh your ass off at that? That's hilarious. Anyway, Shane went on to say that in the midst of all this negative backlash, he would see online that this attention caused a lot more people to find his show, Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast, and actually finding it incredibly funny. So even though there was a lot of bad noise on Twitter, it seemed like all the attention really helped a lot more people find out about Shane, and this would also help him sell tickets at comedy clubs. A lot of comedians came out to talk about the situation as well. Of course, as mentioned earlier, Norm MacDonald came out and defended Shane. A few a few other comedians talked about it as well, and Bill Burr also went on to talk about how he doesn't think it was fair of people to judge Shane as a person because of this incident. Check it out. I don't think it's fair. I wouldn't want to be judged by one thing that I did. Yeah. You know, 10, 15 years ago. So I, that's personally something I wouldn't do. I would never do that to somebody. Right. And it's just I think it's, it says a lot about you as a person that you went out and did that to him is is i mean i i don't think i mean especially like as you're starting out as a comic or, oh. you, or you're like you're riffing and stuff so along with receiving some hate and making a lot of new fans it seemed like shane gillis had also gained some respect from a lot of veteran comedians even with this unfortunate event for shane it seemed like things were just getting better for him at this point on a side note I thought I'd share with you guys that I saw Shane coming to my home comedy club in Tampa back in May 2021, and I went to see him live for myself on my 21st birthday, and it was one of the best shows I had ever seen in Tampa. I actually got to meet and talk with him before his set and also after his set again, and he told me about his phone call with Norm MacDonald. This meant the world to me, and it instantly made Shane one of my favorite comedians because not only was he incredibly funny, but he's also an incredibly down-to-earth guy as well. Aside from my personal anecdote, Shane would proceed to sell tickets across the country in 2021, and I imagine most of, if not all of them, were amazing shows that would continue to show people just how funny Shane really was. Then in July 2021, Shane would appear on the Joe Rogan Experience, where he discussed in great detail everything that happened to him with the Saturday Night Live firing, and this would obviously bring even more attention to what happened, and also who Shane is as a comedian. He made it abundantly clear that he's not trying to be some type of figure for free speech or any type of political position or cancel culture and that he really just wants to do comedy and make people laugh it's weird for me to rail against cancel culture because i was a, a victim of it for lack of a better word you know what i mean why is it weird for you to rail against i don't know i don't know i just it, it makes it me seems defensive yeah and i don't want to be on the other side of it where it's like I'm a free speech guy, I'm a fucking... It's like, dude, I don't want to be involved in any of this. I right. just want to do comedy. This is part of the reason so many people love Shane, because he's not in it for the clout or the fame, and he really just wants to do what he thinks is most entertaining. Joe would love Shane, and this would lead to him becoming a regular guest on the Joe Rogan Experience. He also talked briefly about the taping of his comedy special, which had not yet been released. The special would proceed to be called Live in Austin, and it was released on YouTube September 7th, 2021, and as of right now, it has over 22 million 
million views, which is absolutely unreal. Many people in the comments absolutely love this special, and a lot of comedy fans consider this to be one of the best comedy specials released that year. One of the bits in the special, Louis C.K. actually went on to praise on the Your Mom's House podcast. Check this out. Well, like Shane Gillis does a very funny thing in New yes. York. He's a very funny anomaly in stand-up, which is that he's a red state product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, but he plays to Brooklyn kids. Uh, my father's a Fox News guy. Yeah. And they just go, boo. Yeah. yeah. And he goes, you guys, all your fathers are yeah. Fox News guys. And then yeah. they cheer right yeah. after they booed. <laughs> yeah. They cheer. Yeah. Not only did this special resonate with many comedy fans, but it was praised by one of the greatest comedians to ever live. This trend would not stop either, because later on, Dave Chappelle would go on to praise one of Shane's bits from his special also. All right, this guy I'm bringing on stage is so funny, he, he got canceled at the beginning of his career. <laughs> Please welcome from Almost Saturday Night Live, Shane Gillis. <laughs> I know this had to be one of the coolest moments of Shane's life right here at the Comedy Cellar. It would seem that all of his disingenuous detractors would be eating their words because sure, he didn't end up staying with Saturday Night Live, but now he's entertaining millions of people who love him and working with some of the most legendary names in comedy all at his own merit. Then after this, Shane would tour with Louis C.K. for a bit and just continue to get funnier and funnier as a comedian. Matt and Shane's secret podcast would also reach new levels as well, with the podcast having just south of 400,000 subscribers now, and each episode regularly pulls well over that number in views. Additionally, the dogs have a Patreon for the podcast that has become the most popular Patreon on the website with almost 80,000 paid members. The dogs are making buckets of cash every month, and the best part about this is... None of this has changed Shane or Matt. They're both still incredibly down-to-earth people, and they show with their actions that all they want to do is make people laugh, and that the money and fame while being cool isn't going to change who they are as people. To make things even better, as Shane's popularity continued to crank forward, he would eventually release another comedy special that streamed on Netflix titled Beautiful Dogs on September 5th, 2023. This was a splendid comedy special that was praised by many comedy fans and fellow comedians because it is exactly what Shane did in his previous special, all that was really different different was the jokes. For someone that does humor that is considered unsavory by so many people, you'd think Netflix would have been more hesitant to platform such a hateful bigot, right? That's all horseshit. I don't believe what I just said. Shane got the special because he's funny. There's no way around that fact. Shane worked hard for many years honing his craft of stand-up comedy, and he's always just wanted to make people laugh talking about things he thought there was humor in. Shane is somebody that anyone can laugh at regardless of gender, political affiliation, religion, sexual orientation, or anything else, because he's a genuine goofball who doesn't have a hateful bone in his body. When you're a genuine person, people are going to notice it. Some people even believe that SNL would have held Shane back since his intentions with comedy has always been to do his own thing, and that's certainly a possibility, but luckily we'll never know because now Shane is killing it. Shane Gillis would have probably been the worst cast member on SNL anyway. He always makes me laugh, and that just doesn't fit with the rest of the cast at Saturday Night Live. When all the backlash happened, Shane received more hate than he'd probably ever received in his life, but these types of people who just scour the internet for reasons to hate you aren't the type of people you want to entertain anyway. The types of people that think comedy always has to punch up are out of touch retards because all comedy has to be as funny whether you punch up, down, or sideways. Being funny is your job as a comedian, and Shane Gillis does that job exceptionally well. That's why, even without SNL, Shane made it to the top, and he will likely stay at the top because he genuinely cares about the craft of stand-up comedy, and he's a real-ass dude who just wants to make people laugh. And it seems that a lot of people have realized that and want to follow Shane and everything he does in his future career. All in all, this is how SNL ruined Shane Gillis, but made him a star. Hey everyone, I hope you guys liked the Shane Gillis video. I put a lot of work into it, and Shane Gillis is one of my favorite comedians. If you want to support the channel, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications down below, because that's a free way to support me, and it also helps the community grow brick by brick. We recently hit 10,000 subscribers, and that's absolutely amazing to me. I want to hit 100,000 subscribers this year, and I think I can do it, so I would appreciate it if you guys helped me out by subscribing to the channel. If you want to take your support, to the next level you can check out my patreon page down below where you get some exclusive benefits like you get to see videos early you get to see content no one else sees like my set at the tampa improv recently you get to play a direct hand in the direction my channel takes and you also get shout outs every single video shout out to jason murray cross blocker ethan thomas gill and karsten the newest patron for being patrons and supporting me but yeah once again i hope you guys enjoyed the comedy lore video take care of yourselves your friends your family and your loved ones i love you and i'll see you in the next video take care I made weed ice cream recently. Really?
I made weed ice cream and um, I ate it and I watched Love on the Spectrum and I was convinced Bro. I was convinced I was autistic. I was watching that show <laughs> high and I was just like <laughs> I was like sitting I there was, like what do you do if she doesn't like dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching I it. I was convinced, dude. I was like, I'm de- I definitely have this. And was fully like, damn, dude. I look like if an Aust- Australian is retarded, they just look like me. <laughs> Somebody was like, how can you tell if someone's retarded if they have an Australian accent? Yeah. Because they all sound retarded. <laughs> They're like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, the, ne- the, the regular Australians are just like tan, hot people. Yeah. And then if you're retarded, you just look exactly like me. If you don't look like a model, it's no, dis- <laughs> it's no either, delineation. Dude, pale, frumpy <laughs> motherfuckers that stayed inside. No, that, that uh, yeah, everybody's going to be talking about this show. It's literally a show designed for... Yeah, I feel like it's, it's a weird, trap. It's weird, dude. It is weird. It's a trap, dude. I'm, I was watching it, and I'm like, I have pretty loose morals, and I was like, I don't know if, you're, if you should yeah. be doing this, man. This is Also, like... teaming them up, making them date each other. It's like, dude, give. that's why we have fucking weird sex perverts. Just get one dude that's weird enough to fuck like a retarded lady, and let her take let him take care of her. True, you think they can't link doing... them both up and then be like, "All right, you two figure it out, yeah. get a house." Well, they'll, 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 like, how much have you watched of it? Have you watched a couple episodes? I watched two. Yeah, so they'll go on the dates and be like, "Hey, do you guys need a break?" Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, dude, the dates are anxiety provoking. We're there, and they're, when they're sitting there, they and they're put asking them each other about like the shows and stuff, and they just both freeze up. They both freeze up. Yeah, and so, dude, that must be intense levels of anxiety. You're so taking you, a person sorry. with autism and putting them on camera. Yeah, it's like that can't be like relaxing. So if you haven't seen it, it's called Love on the Spectrum, and it's uh, but it's just a show, a documentary following uh, autistic Australians. And, but yeah, that that is, I it is kind of weird, man. The fact that like you know if they're Right now, saying like you shouldn't clap because it could set off someone who's autistic in like a public gathering. It's like, oh, but if you want to like put them on camera and film them Bro. awkwardly trying to date, it's pretty fucking nuts. Yeah. Dude. How about the one at the the costume party? Oh, the, and the then Comic-Con? they just put him outside. I only saw the one where he goes to Comic Con and ditches his date for uh, for the lady from there's Gilligan's one, Island. There's one that's a girl, and then she went and sat outside with this dude, and they just they were like, oh, they, this one autistic girl was dancing. And then another dude came up and started dancing with her, and they were like, and they talk about it. It's like a fucking nature show. They're like, oh, she may have found a mate out there. <laughs> and then they put him outside and made him talk, and the kid couldn't talk. Yeah. Because there's a camera in his face. He's on a date, and he didn't know he was doing it. I don't think. Well, I'm sure he did. But yeah. he didn't, you know, his autism kicked in hard, and he couldn't. She was like, I'll, I'll lead it. Do you like cats or dogs? And he's like, Oh, I saw that. When she was at- like, I have a cat. He's like, do you have a cat? And he's like, yes. Yeah. Oh, I do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, holy shit. Dude. Yeah, it was very uncomfortable. For and that then dude. it's like, that guy, I don't know if he got paid. And now his family just has to be like, holy fuck, dude. He was. We just sent him to the dance. He ended up on Netflix. Yeah, like having like a slight nervous breakdown. Yeah, being on TV, just like, I have a cat named Gertrude. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, holy fuck. Yeah, it was, that was probably one of the most uncomfortable parts so far. It was he like he mean. freaks out. He just goes like, "Oh yeah." Oh, then, yeah that <laughs> was the best part. She's like, "Should we go inside then?" He's like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I can't. I don't know how Netflix is getting away with this right now. Dude, that would be sick though if they got some sort of like first family situation going on, like the like London royalty. What do you mean? Just if they establish, like, if, if an somebody... An kingdom? Yeah. Like a if, monarchy? If somebody, like, links up and produces an offspring from the show, they probably... That's, like, that's like monarchy level. True. That is, if like... If that one dude finds a bay on the show, basically, he's already practicing. It's like, and she will be my queen. <laughs> yeah, dude. God damn, that show. That's... Yeah, I was, I was, I was binging some Netflix. That's going to be a one season done. They're going to do that. No, that's and then, a fucking hit, dude. You think it's going to be, like, a Seinfeld? That might be a Seinfeld, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to end with one of them. Nah, never mind. <laughs> be a bit of a, you know, there could be a shooting or something. <laughs> that would be fucked up, man. No, it's it's they're just peace lovers, dude. It's also weird to see a couple of them that are, you know, because, of course, it is a spectrum. So some, oh, of, them, dude. some of them don't have it that bad. Don't get me kinda, started on that one guy. I'm, I got that one guy in my scope right now. That one dude that's a real, dude, he's real like, Casanova. I love your body. No, the yeah. one guy who's like, I love your body. I'm like, one of you, I think I think the dude's kind of faking it. I think bit. he's faking it for those tits. Yeah, I think he's faking for those sure. Those tits tits. I was, I, was watch, I was watching it, and I was just kind of like, you know, this dude doesn't have this. My, you know, people have Kadar. I have an all. Aust- my all star is pretty good. Mine went off the hook when fucking Hannah Gadsby claimed it. 
she yeah dude she claimed it and i was like come on is now. there an autistic revolution in australia right now there must be. You must get decent. I mean, you're getting shows. You must get some clout for autism in Australia. Yeah, I mean, autism's hot right now. In <laughs> Australia? It's so in. They have to change the thing to Australia. Autism, <laughs> <laughs> Australia. Anyway. But yeah, well, the other thing, too, anyway. is like, dude, from a, legal, from a legal perspective, it's like, how does that work contract-wise? Are you able to – I mean, it's like, does it – do they understand, like, the point, like, you want to be on TV? They're like, yeah. They're like, do yes. you understand? Yes. Do you understand what's going to happen? Yes. I mean, I guess anyone takes that risk. You're on TV, someone might clown you. But True. it's like, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it's a honeypot. I think this whole thing's a honeypot to catch alt-right podcasters and be like, oh, they made fun of love <laughs> on the spectrum. Take them down. It is this show that's it's designed to be. It's a trap, dude. It's a trap, dude. Because it is such a nice, sweet show that making fun of it is bad. It is so funny. When you watch it, it is so funny. Also, when they show these people, do they have to play that music? You know that, like, f- almost, like, comical, like, stringy, like... I don't know. Next time you watch it, listen to the music like they play. Like a string play. band Every time, kind of thing? Anytime they, like, show an autistic dude, like, walking around, it's like, blum, blum, blum. <laughs> like, this music while this guy's just going about his day. It's like, come on, man. So you, you didn't get to the episode, episode of the uh, Chinese dude yet, did you? I've seen him <laughs> kicking around. Don't you dare put that on me, boy. He's great, dude. He, 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 was, he does realize. I saw him fixing his hair. They gave him the, they gave him like the dating lessons, dude. It's uh-huh. so fucking funny, man. And he has a slight accent. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh yeah, for sure. So he, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, this is a trap, dude. This is a pure trap. They dude. fucking seized my mind, and I, I, it was just like limitless. I'm like, oh my god, and I was like, <laughs> like, I'm not falling for this. They're like, what's the funniest thing imaginable? I don't know. Probably like a. Autistic Asian dude in Australia dating <laughs> show. <laughs> Do you want to go inside, Dan? Yes. Yeah, that was that was rough, man. Yeah, that one, that one was like I, I kind of felt bad because it was like, yeah. damn, you're sticking a camera in this dude's face and he can't talk and they're like asking him to do like cats or dogs more and he's he's like I can't even I can't. Dude, that, that should be I like this was, is like early UFC, you know, before like you yeah. could get like kneed in the head for like ten minutes and they finally break it up. They got to learn how to throw in the towel quicker on these things. Yeah, that one lady had. Oh, they almost the two of them almost had a heart attack when they were both on that date in like a fancy place. Yeah, they were. I liked like that girl. That dude, was a good date. That I was, was. Yeah, I was hoping they would link. Especially up. off the the SpongeBob intro they had on the speed dating. Oh, dude! I nice. saw her eyeing him up when he yeah. was when he was doing his SpongeBob impression, and she was like, "Who the fuck is that?" <laughs> <laughs> she was on a different date. Heard a dude down the table doing a SpongeBob, and was like. <laughs> she, was, she was definitely being like, yo, who the fuck is that? Who is that star? <laughs> they also don't like each other. Any, every time they all go to date each other, they're like, Man, I think we're just friends. They yeah. don't really like each other at all. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Except that one, dude. The dude who drives a bus, is he the one that loves her tits? Yeah. He's yeah. driving buses? Come on now. I mean, dude, <laughs> he's kind of a fa- That guy's kind of fraud. I'm not going to lie. That guy's kind of fraud. I didn't want to say it, but it's like. I watched that, and I was like, I think this dude's fucking... think he's fraudulent? I think he's in autism for the wrong reasons. <laughs> I think he's just trying to get ahead. <laughs> you don't think it's for the love of the game? Nah. <laughs> I don't think so at all. Yeah. I think he's just seeking fame through Tism, dude, like all the other Australians right now. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? No, that was that was a good show. I'm going to watch the whole thing. I, I am, I'm rooting I for it, man. Yeah. I hope they all... I hope that show works out and arcs in a way where, like, you know, it's good for everybody. Especially when you see like the the parents, man. It's like just yeah. to, just to have just like come to grips with that and just be like, "Fuck, what are we doing right now?" And it's just like I got I got to talk about SpongeBob for twenty five years. Uh. But dude, it's like <laughs> it's like living with a black kid. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my favorite part was when I think it's my. <laughs> My, his name's Michael, right? The main kid. He, like, responds to his mother like he's, like... He literally sounded like a general in the Revolutionary War. She's like, oh, well, if you don't find someone you want to date... And he's like, I will not accept that as an answer. I was like, yes, dude. Get pussy. It's, it is sick how they'll, they really do. And again, I, this is why I think I have a little bit of autism. They'll, like, pick a thing, and that's just it. That guy picked a character yeah. that's, like, a Revolutionary War general type. The other guy's a dinosaur expert. That dude's a fucking pimp, dude. Wait, wait which one's the dinosaur expert? He took the uh, the one girl out and was like, uh, that might have been the third episode. I only saw it. He's a paleontologist. He goes on a date with like the tall chick. 
I, I can't. I, uh, I think I might have missed I think it. You might, I think I'm too. Phil, Phil fucking bullied me off the Netflix on that. He didn't want to watch it. I was kind of like half watching it, and then he was like, "What the hell are you watching?" Because he just saw like a date. <laughs> I was like, "I don't know, dude. Put the golf on." <laughs> Wow. Did Kanye do a Lex Friedman interview? Yeah. Yes, he did. I watched what? it. I, I listened to it last night before. I had to turn it off. How it was nice was so it? ramped up. It's uh, He's saying, he's like, from my personal perspective, I got f***ed over in business by my Jewish manager's agents. He's like, it's happened so many times. He's doing Don't try well. to cover up for what you guys do to the... <laughs> Well, well, you, what well, you guys do to uh, African Americans in the music industry? Well, he wants to say, he kept saying, in my the fellow interview, people who run this platform, please delete all no. comments <laughs> that take no. away from the Jews. Jews, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't do it to well, us. Well, the, the funny part in the interview truly, is when he's uh, he starts going to Jewish media and, and Fre Friedman's like, bro, bro, like, what are you doing? He was like, what, I can't say that? And they were like, no. He's like, all right, the JM. And he's like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> really? yeah. Don't say Jewish media and Jewish, Jewish controlled media. JM. Like, you know what? I'm sorry I had a sleepy text. I'm sorry I wrote. I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry that I I put uh that I was uh five twelve or five eleven on uh Tinder. Okay, my cock is not fourteen inches. I lied. Okay, it's only thirteen. Dude, the whole episode, he's like, we're both engineers. I'm dealing in facts. He's like, what I said, I said. I'm sorry it hurt people, but I'm also not apologizing for saying it. He's like, I'm just dealing with facts, and we're just engineers with engineering opportunities in front, or we're human yeah. beings with engineering opportunities in front of us, and we should stop teaching history altogether. Yeah. And just engineer sick shit, and then you have recess. You need in to stay away from Kanye interviews. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. I know, but <laughs> he's, this, so he's literally speaking yeah, your no language. Fooia. He did. These, these are words. Uh, JM is you. JM is so 100 funny, you. Dude, dude at one part, he goes, like, Yeah, but Kanye, but underneath all of this, like, we are just humans. And like we're all the same on some deep fundamental level. And Kanye West goes, "Doom, doom, doom, doom." Hey man, I'm actually trying to hold it together. You're pretty, you're pretty offensive towards towards a lot. Tight sweater, tight sweater, John Legend, dude, good speller. <laughs> Is that what Kanye says about him? <laughs> tight sweater, good speller. <laughs> I spelled it wrong. I have a tendency to do that. I'm not quite John Legend, tight sweater level spelling B level. So, <laughs> so holy funny. shit, he called him a good speller. Yeah, he was just like, I'm not a good speller. I, I didn't realize I didn't know how to spell DEFCON. I spelled a DEFCON. That was my mistake. He's like, I'm a bad speller. That's the apology. He's, He's like, I'm Jewish. I'm a bad speller. That's all it was. And I was sleepy. It is what it is. Now we're here at this moment. It was a sleepy tweet. Sleepy tweet, dude. It gets sleepy, tweet. <laughs> sleepy tweet. Yeah, I come to sleep. Sleep. That's what he tweet. said. He goes, I met DEFCON. You guys are reading into it. I met Defcon. Yeah, I think he was like, I'm just a bad speller. He kept taking notes during the podcast. He's like, I like that. I'm going to write that down. Blacks will often put that F where the TH is. <laughs> this was a nice reversal. <laughs> it's open season. He opened it. Yeah. It's open season. It's open season on what? Jews versus Blacks. They can clash again. <laughs> Remember what they did to you guys? They made you guys build the pyramids? <laughs> I know. The Blacks and the aliens teamed up. And nah, made Kanye, my Kanye claimed he built the, Kanye built the pyramids. Kanye built the pyramids. He claimed Blacks built the pyramids. Blacks built it? Hey, Blacks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let, let me go to the, the next furore, which has been around you in the last couple of weeks, which is yeah. your attack. Is that, 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 is that British for theory? Is that British for theory? <laughs> What's theory, bro? Is that British for theory? You actually have quite a good British accent. That's quite good. <laughs> Given the fallout from this, you would think again about how you phrase that sentence. Because actually, you didn't mean all Jewish oh, given, people. Given did the you? fallout, Given the fallout, well, given do, the fallout. Do you care about the we'll hurt you out. cause Jewish people? We'll fall out. Bro, would any of hey, that... bro, hey, hey, bro, I ain't finished. I ain't finished my sentence. Nothing you're, nothing my you're saying has idea. anything to do hey, boy, with regret. Hey, hey boy, don't call hey, me boy, boy. Don't finish, I told you. I haven't been to the hospital since. And haven't taken, you know, medication in two years. And I'm sure there'll be people... In the media, we won't say, where from will say, well, oh, that's obvious. You own the same bullshit as the other people. So you're doing the same thing that the other, let's say media, because I'm not allowed to yeah. say, has done. So until somebody Which is what? Up, Which is what, man? Is, Which is what? Is, I'm trying to call you out in your bullshit because I hope I'm somebody you can trust. That's I don't it. trust you.
Well, you should find people in your life you can trust. Don't tell me what I should do. I'm not one of your BLM marchers. Listen, I'm with you on the BLM. Uh, a lot of organizations use tragedy. It, it, and uh, and I watched the Candace Owens documentary. I'm going to cry. What, what was your take on it? I think it's important to question the mainstream narratives. This is silly because you don't know me. But it, it hurt when you say you don't trust me. You kind of lost me. I don't think anyone's ever said that to me. Um, I just thought you were one of the great, greatest artists ever. It'd be cool to talk to you. And I just, I feel like you got pain you're working through. I never had anyone say that to me. I, I, maybe I'm just being a mess about it, I guess. <laughs> Juice. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not going to say who's doing that. <laughs> It is. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen him do that, right? No. Have you seen Kanye do that? No. Dude, he, he's what? talking about getting diagnosed. He's like, I, now I'm not allowed to say what race the guy was, who the doctor was, who misdiagnosed me. You know, I get in trouble if I say what race it was, so I'm no, not going to do that. Say that. It was he a Jewish doctor. <laughs> <laughs> he does it. He does it. Hold on, you got to see it. The it's, thing about the red hat that drove me to a point of exhaustion. See which was misdiagnosed the audio, dude. by a, I'm not going to say what race, what people, uh, doctor, and what hospital, and what media went to. We know I can't say that. It was a Jewish doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you know I can't say that. Oh it was my, Oh, my God. Dude. He tried. He tried to stop. He tried. He tried his best to stop. He was like, they're saying I can't say anymore. I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to stop. No, I'm not. It was just <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm never stopping. We had somewhat of a heated debate on this podcast. I had somewhat of a debate with Spud as well. Where I was like, no, Kanye is a f crazy dude. He is crazy. He's he's a different thinker. I'm also, I, you know, I don't, I'm not like a t full anti-psychiatrist, but I do. He's a different thinker? I think he's a little different thinker, dude. I mean, the, the thing that was disappointing. It's of, a funny way to describe like retarded people. Come, come on. No way, dude. I don't mean it like that. Bunch of a different thinker. Right. It's just weird to hear like he's a self-proclaimed genius. Yeah, that's very annoying And as it's well. like you're a music producer that designed like Crocs for Adidas. I'm Walt Disney. Yeah. Can I be fair? All Walt Disney did was draw a mouse. Music is harder than drawing a mouse. Okay. Yeah, you think Chingy's more talented than uh, <laughs> Walt Disney? Yeah, Disney hasn't done shit. You're right. Other yeah. than control the entire United States. He didn't do that. Bob Eager does that. And I don't give. I don't know enough about Walt Disney, but I bet he did more than draw a mouse. He hated the Jews. I do remember that, which is kind of why I'm standing up for him. <laughs> <laughs> if you think he's a genius, who else is a genius in music that, like... If that's what you're saying, because if you're, if maybe we just have different standards for genius, because if he's a genius, Bieber's a genius. No, Bieber doesn't. Bieber's not a genius. So you have to produce to be a genius. You have to produce. So DJ Khaled. But he doesn't. Genius. Like, he doesn't rap or anything. He, he can sometimes. <laughs> he did once, once. He's got a, he's got one hot bar. Yeah. So you need to produce a rapper. You got to be like, you got to do everything. Like he, there's nothing he can't not do. He can't do a podcast. <laughs> well, he can't speak. The thing that I, I find encouraging is that he'll be like, he'll, he says he checks his own ego. He uses God now instead of having to fuel everything through his, through his whole, fueling his whole like things through his ego and all of his actions. He's like, seems like he's on a different type of path. So I'm kind of excited. That's about cool. Him. God is alive and I'm anointed. I am pro-life. I am pro-God. I believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and died for our sins. People, just in general, they love me so much. I'm like actually a hard guy to really hate for a long period of time it's just because like, because of like my huge cock. And that's what I noticed. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't understand why you showed it to me when we first met, but now I understand. Yeah. It's very nice. Congratulations. <laughs>
oh fuck dude how where the fuck did everything come from and i'm like i get overwhelmed by it constantly i'm like this is fucking crazy so today i was sitting there like dude i'm so happy everything's here I started being real grateful for it. I was trying to see if I could expand the feeling. Yeah, you snuck up on a dead turtle. <laughs> that was before. That was before. <laughs> I would just go, oh, my God, I'm so happy. And I tried to big, build the biggest thank you inside my body and release it. And it was, I was doing that while I was walking. It was nice. felt like fucking blissful. And then I went for a long walk and thought about it. It was just a bunch of fun stuff. That's crazy. It was awesome. Yeah. Just walking around being like, dude, this music's playing. Trees are here. I'm like, this is so fucking sick. I, haven't getting I drank crushed. coffee, too, this morning. <laughs> I That's nice, though. I drank coffee. <laughs> Yeah, it's my gratitude. Trying to build bumps. up a thank you nut is Dude, fucking sick. You build yeah. up a huge one in you and you just go, fuck yeah, and you yeah. release it and you feel fantastic because you're yeah. sending it out. So you charge it up as big as you can. You go, yes, it's gratitude. Yeah, big, huge one. It's pretty nice. It actually is. The, I was, it's, that's what I was thinking about. It's the exact antidote for fucking just a nasty, miserable mood. Yeah, the blue. So nasty, miserable mood is you're usually wanting something. If you're grateful, you want for nothing in that moment, at least. So I've been trying to orient myself towards it. It's just ridiculous for me to be a fucking. A baby. A bitch about anything. I'm like, yeah. I catch myself and I go, dude. Yeah. You're just running a program, dude. This is bullshit. And I go, time for a gratitude bomb. I go, fuck. My wife's just sleeping next to me. I'm fucking flexing <laughs> as hard as you can. <laughs> <laughs> I was building, Tanks dude, cosmic level gratitude bombs. My body at 630 just. Damn, who do you think that's hitting out there in the astral realm? I don't know, whoever. Not Sean. I, I mean, hit. not Sean. Sean. Yeah. <laughs> Sean's been letting out real I mean, dude, that's negative the thing. bombs. <laughs> I've fully accepted. We're just, we don't know. We can't fathom the universe. Like, it's just an ant describing. Don't kill yourself. It's an ant describing America, dude. It's just like, I don't know, man. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just sending out the gratitude bombs. It's so easy to take stock of everything you have to be grateful for, too. Yeah. Just the simple things like wiggling your toes. You're like, there's so many people who would just do anything in their lives to be able to wiggle their toes. True. We can wiggle, yeah. wiggle. True that. I get crushed my, by the uh, the innocence my, of children. My president, <laughs> Joe Biden, may he win again. Yeah. <laughs> I, we need a strong leader, dude. We need him back. We He's the Joe. fucking, obviously the best candidate. Big, big ups. To run the most important the country in the world. Like, like, every day I go, big up, boss man, big bite. Big bite on. <laughs> boss man, bite on. <laughs> but yeah, that was nice. I did that this morning and spun that right into like a four mile walk. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I started, uh, Actually, what I started thinking about was how SJW liberal ladies are kind of like repressed about racism, like 90s bullies are about homosexuality. They go around the whole time and they're like, really you're fine. fucking racist. Like, you're gay. The whole, yeah. yeah. You're that. fucking racist, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's nice. I laughed at myself about that. I said, <laughs> so true. <laughs> You've done it again, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I had a total You've flight. Time to find a turtle. Yeah, the cla- I started laughing at all the classic trope about how to, like, in every movie, it's like a 90s bully. Be like, you're fucking gay. And eventually gets like fingered under the bleachers. Yeah. I was like, actually, that actually didn't happen. No, that in bully, Glee, the boy ended up being the man. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. <laughs> he I was right. Glee, they were all gay. That was a Glee. real uh, thing in Glee, though. There was a guy who was like, you guys are gay. Then at one point, those stories, he's like, oh, and he kisses one of the singers. He's like, I'm so sorry. That is every theater kid's dream. They get made fun of, but the quarterback, oh, the, yeah. the local high school quarterback's like, you, you guys are fucking gay. <laughs> <laughs> in their head, they're like, he wants to kiss me. <laughs> and then they're in front of a mirror, and he's they're just combing the quarterback's hair, yeah. like putting eyeliner on him. He's so, <laughs> he wants Stuffing to be with me. With that's why he's mean to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's probably why they're mad. That's why, why people are really mad about bullying. It's just it's like, he never kisses. He me. never fucks them. Yeah, I never... He just said all the mean stuff and he got me all worked up and fucking horny. And oh, and fuck me. Aaron Hernandez, he did it. <laughs> True. Oh, yeah. He True. was a big bully boy. True. He, said, he was a big bully man. He said, mm. big officer, my main man, <laughs> butt fucking. <laughs> <laughs> butt fucker. <laughs> That's got to be crazy to shake that off, though. If you've been bullying people, if you've been gay bullying everybody all day, then and you're gay. Butt slam a guy and you're like, <laughs> 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 no, I didn't do that. That's his gratitude That's bomb. True. Really. <laughs> it's getting yeah. it out of him. <laughs> uh, Man, I'm why. sleepy. We're going to have to get to this steakhouse. True. I'm so excited. It was your birthday yesterday. We yep. had a yeah. big party. You made us all sing to you. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> None make... of that happened. I'll be sincere. We <laughs> sang him happy birthday at midnight at Joe Rogan's club, and you handled it very uh, kindly, and then we moved along. Thank you. I thought you were going to lash out at us. <laughs> I was fighting everything in me not to lash out. Yeah. <laughs> I looked Storm around. Out. I said, "Who did this?" Yeah, Joe Rogan was dressed <laughs> as a hitman. We're singing to you. It was a strange. Who time. betrayed me? Yeah. Which one of you rats made everyone sing at midnight? It was me. It was you, Sam. 
you, rat, you mm-hmm. betrayed me, and then you came here and read at my house like I a did. wife. Yes, <laughs> I did. You what do you read? What do you while I was on? pushing the sled? I've done. A, yeah, last night before bed, staring you're like, at a Navy SEALs ass. You want to go work out tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. I was like, no. Yeah, <laughs> that was the last. You would like it. You, you would. You would truly enjoy that. I shit. had time to read by myself. I got in your pool. That sounds way like better. An egg. That yeah. sounds way better. I like haven't had any time just to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, are in paradise, dude. Tea time. Tea time. That's the best. Just getting the pump. The pump, I needed it. The like, hangover, like the, the hangover. I knew I would defeat the hangover via sauna. Yeah, I do enjoy. I live for the pump. Pushing the sled for my daddy, Joe Rogan. I said, "Dad, <laughs> did daddy, watch how strong I've gotten." Is he here. on the sled yelling at you like a line no, coach? No, no, no. But it, that would work. Push it, pig. <laughs> Push yeah. it. You're looking back the whole time, I get, pushing it. I get, daddy, are you looking? Are you watching me? <laughs> Joe, watch, watch, Joe. <laughs> he does do a good job of getting you into the cold plunge. Otherwise, I would never do it. Yeah, you yeah. Need Daddy Rogan standing there going. Do you Get slide in, in like slowly, no, or do no, you no. plop? I plop water flies everywhere. Yeah, and I go fuck, 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 fuck. Mm-hmm. It's true. very relaxing. It feels good. I like to do the cold shower occasionally. I'm not one of these freaks that does it all the time. Cold showers are kind of difficult. Well, when you feel it getting cold, I just kind of wait in there and let all the water die, mm. and then you know I think I'm in there for two minutes, eight seconds. It's yeah, four I'm brave. I do the same thing. I'm like, that's good. It's been like three I seconds. I turn it off immediately. I go, all right, we're going to keep it cold. Go, ooh. <laughs> and then I get out of the shower. And I go, oh, fuck. I'm reaping all the benefits now. I go, I can tell my blood's flowing. Yeah, mm. I'll like work out and stick my one leg in the cold shower. And I'm like, that's healed. Perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my ligaments have all been going back to normal size. Perfect. <laughs> oh, God, motherfucking man. S- Sam. It's been such a treat having you. It's other been a blast. Than, other man. than when you're being nasty, it's been very nice. No, I really enjoy my time. Sean, with you. weigh in on this. <laughs> weigh in on it. Who was being nasty yesterday? It was mutual, I thought. <laughs> Who fired the first shot? It could have been Sam. I don't remember. Who was I firing what about shots? A bir- what about a birthday force field? He did have the birthday. It force was my field. birthday, and I yeah. do have a force field. <laughs> it was your party. <laughs> yep. Touch my foot. That's my gift. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I told you I was your gift. <laughs> you are your yes. gift. Unwrap me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to a steakhouse. Dude, let's go. Let's, let's launch. Celebrate you. Let's go to a steakhouse. Not to celebrate me, but to celebrate us. Sean, tell him it's his birthday Kinship. as soon as we walk in. I'll pants you. <laughs> <laughs> For un- an unbuckled pants would be tough. I'll too. rip your pants. It'll be a long struggle in front of everyone. <laughs> People will be like screaming. Like go, What's he doing? <laughs> the mater d will be holding me back. Yeah, He's you're yelling for help. Me. No <laughs> one's helping you. <laughs> so that it's not allowed in here. You better hope those cooks don't go look at that meat, though. <laughs> They're going to say, we need to fucking get a hold oh. of that meat. Table side flambe. Sean's dick thing. would be like the crab and the little mermaid, Ooh. dude. The French chefs would be, hot dish. Yeah. <laughs> we should take some lessons on how to cook when we're there tonight. Because your experience in that kitchen have been horrifying. I cannot cook. Oh, I, I just throw Instapot, dude. You get an Instapot I just throw steak on a. You know fire. how to cook? Yeah, he can oh, yeah. cook. This guy, I can't he's cook. Like he can a learn. You have mule to... with a spinning wheel. Yeah, there. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> learning, yeah. learning's really weird. When I learned how to cook, it's like what the fuck. Once you figure it out, it's a piece of fucking. Cake. Oh, it's the best. It yeah. is fun. It yeah. is he really told fun. me I had to wait. I made some steaks. He said, yeah. "Let him sit so the juice." I said, "How long do I have to wait?" He said, <laughs> five, ten minutes." I was like, yeah, fucking do it. Yeah, true. We're like, "Come on, can I eat?" Enjoy your walk. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I, I am aware of what you're saying there, It is weird if you really think about it Every single person you pass For the most part Like brings about some sort of like reaction Like pretty heavy reaction in your head it's Unless pretty, it's like Chris O'Connor <laughs> Just staring at the ground Not recognizing anyone's in the street with him <laughs> <laughs> that, that kid's ability to just When you're in a grocery yeah, store How much do you like it, What's your inner monologue like If you're walking past people in the grocery store Are you like Fucking look at this Dude, I'm If I'm in a grocery store I'm going I, Why did I come here I don't know <laughs> I don't even know What to buy I'm fucking nasty I don't know store. what to buy Dude, I'm I go super- look at snacks I'm like I'm not getting any of this <laughs> I, go, I should get like Granola bars for the morning <laughs> and I stare at them. I got two boxes of oatmeal in there. Stop. I got two boxes of uh, oatmeal. oatmeal. I saw it. Instant did oatmeal. That's the only thing I have. First right thing now. I did when I came in here, I went through his cabinets to see what, see what was no, doing. Well, I'm go- I was gone for two you weeks. Go all the time. Yeah. You can't get expired products. Yeah. I got some meat in there. That, that came in handy. Yeah, true. I had some lunch meat and cheese wraps. Mm. So that's a good meal. That is nice. No, if I go to the grocery store, I'm literally in there going, I don't even know how to make anything really? or what to get. 
Yeah. And I'm no. like, what do I do? I have anything? I don't know what I have. I'm fucking nasty in a grocery store, dude. Yeah. I I'm supermarket it. sweep. I'm like that fat guy who goes right for the hams. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you're getting. I know exactly what I'm getting. I, I know, know exactly where it is. I've been I've, in that store so many yeah. times. Yeah. You need a standard base. It's like I'm hitting apples, avocados. You always need like an onion, some garlic. You go pro- you go produce all the way to cheese. Produce first. You start produce I can tell first. you where the capers are in that fucking yeah. That's Sea Town. Yeah, <laughs> I got every every. Steak. I know where the fillet is. I go back <laughs> yeah, left. I go in there. Yeah, I get the yeah. steak, and then I walk out. <laughs> then I go fuck. I should get like Q-tips <laughs> for the steak. I lemming. Yes. I do lemming out. If it's a new grocery store I've never been before, I, I like just walk around. I short circuit and water sometimes I'll go in and not get a cart. I'll be like, I'm only getting like a few oh, things, dude, and then I dude. have a handful of <laughs> dude. Nothing that matches. It's Dunkaroos. Nothing you, you that goes. Tell, together. You want to yeah. tell every person like I always do this to myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have like a crazy stack of stuff all the time, and I'm always like, fuck, why did I do this? Yeah. What do you got out here? Like Kroger's or something? Whole Foods, baby. H-E-B. Huh? H-E-B? I, everyone talks about yeah. H-E-B out here. Like, it's the best store. It's a regular grocery it's store. It's a regular fucking grocery store. Do they actually like... They oh, my God. It? Dude, you'll never be able to live without it. It's like, dude, it's not they that... They probably have never normal... been anywhere else. It's all right. It's not as good yeah. as Wegmans on the East Coast shits on H-E-B. Wegmans destroys it. Straight up shits yeah. on it. I yeah. still slam with fucking ride with Whole Foods. It's my favorite. I try so to go to different grocery stores. It's the best grocery store. People can shit on me. I don't think it's me. yeah. I don't think that's up for debate. You don't do, you have a Trader Joe's on here? Trader Joe's is fucking. Is it garbage? Bullcrap. I don't dude. go Trader to Trader Joe's is for lesbians, dude. I yeah. go to bodegas and <laughs> the bodegas of supermarkets. Thumbs it's up just on all lesbians, the essentials. Thumbs up on Trader Joe's. Huh? <laughs> What'd you say? Thumbs up on lesbians. Thumbs down on Trader Joe's. Yes. Thumbs up. <laughs> no, I, Trader Joe's. I th- I don't like it, man. It's crappy. It's for real crappy. The Our way sense. they package everything, you have to buy like six chicken fillets. They're all like shrink wrapped in like a. You are a foodie. I scroll. had no idea. I don't like to cook, dude. Yeah, dude. I like, Matt's, that. Uh, I like to nourish my you body. You cooked a lot when we went on vacation. Yeah. True. Matt's also into like good, healthy foods. Yeah. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. Grass fed. Yeah. Not Why don't you make your own, your, your own uh, acai? Acai bowls? Yeah. You ever try it? It's oh, not, yeah. yeah. Oh, brother, I have. Yeah, absolutely. How'd you do? Great. I'm yeah. Pretty nasty. Idea. Nice. It takes a while. But yeah, I'm pretty nasty. At making I love it. I love whatever that fucking gruel. You got to teach me the gruel. I'll dude. teach you the gruel for real. <laughs> That's all I need is the Tell gruel. Tell me about the gruel. Homemade Massaman curry, basically. It's yeah. such a good gruel, dude. It's nice, dude. It's nice. Chicken. Mm-hmm. Rice. Mm-hmm. Taters. Carrots. You're peppers. making your own curry, too? Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I would be I would be playing video games and he would go, I got a little extra. You want some? I go. Yes. We can cook tonight if you don't want to go to that show. That'd be nice. You and I can yeah. treat the boy. Dude, we should all go to the grocery store tonight. Late night grocery store trip. That'd be cook fun. a meal. That'd be fucking awesome. Yeah. I dude, nice. I love the grocery store. I for real love yeah. it. I could go there. It's my favorite. It's like my favorite thing. You just take the, the leftovers home so they don't go bad. We'll be in Oklahoma. Oh, I actually <laughs> brought you some man. Oh, did I leave that in the car? You brought you brought me some lamb. I think I did. But if I left it in the car, we're in trouble. Dude, oh, I gotta yeah, show you yeah. pictures of lamb I made for for uh, Thanksgiving. I didn't do turkey. You did, did lamb, a roast rack of lamb, and I made a salsa verde sauce. Oh my god! Mm. And a fennel salad with uh, blood orange margarita yeah, or blood orange. Uh, do you ever make yourself a big fancy dinner, then eat it and get really sad? No, I get happy. I've done that to myself before. Really? <laughs> I've made myself a big fancy dinner, and then you finish it, and you're just like, <laughs> you wish you could have shared it with someone. Feel so sad. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Because then you eat a dinner silently, and then you quietly do the dishes, and then you just sit down, and you go, well. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking weird. I've it's, done it. I'll tell you what. It's, I've, I've done never it myself. Done, I've never done the big fancy, but any meal I've ever made, and then sat down and ate it, and then gone back and had to put everything away. You like, feel like a guy in a Van Gogh painting? You're just yeah. like. <laughs> sit in a chair in a room. Dude, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually love doing that. It's like, it's peaceful. Yeah, I mean, dude. You dude. know when you see like an old man at the movies by himself? That movies by, eating by himself. Movies by yourself is we, awesome. Movies by yourself and I yeah, can go to restaurants. Yeah, but as a kid, looking at the old man, you're like, oh. Yeah. And that guy had oh, a mate. totally a piece. Yeah. Drinking yeah. alone. Totally a piece. I of, like restaurants by myself. I'll go sit at a restaurant by myself, no problem. Restaurant by myself is 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 nice, mm-hmm. but it takes me a minute to get adjusted. Yeah. I've done restaurant. I did restaurant by myself recently, and I didn't bring my phone. Mm-hmm. That was uncomfortable. Did you sit at the bar, though? No, I was at a booth yeah, by myself so without a phone. Problem. Just, Dude, I try to challenge staring. myself to not look at my phone when I'm eating out by myself. I got sushi by myself recently, so and you just sit there like, and the waitress <laughs> yeah. comes, you're like... <laughs> yeah. It's very weird. You need your phone. Are you from here? Yeah. <laughs> fuck out I here. just moved here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're, you're an RPG you character, dude. You're yeah. sitting there... <laughs> 
I just moved here. Okay. The weather sure is nice today. <laughs> the weather's a lot different than where I'm from. It's cold where I'm from right now. <laughs> Can I have a California roll? <laughs> Can I have your most basic? Yeah, you're not roll? a bar eater, which always bothered me. Eat at the bar? Yeah, like when we go on the road and we eat, I'm always like, gosh, pick the bar, pick the bar, pick the bar. Really? I just like sitting alongside my buddies and you're staring at the bar. You have access to the drink immediately. Me and my girl, bar only family, regardless mm. of how, how high end the restaurant is. Yeah, it's also a trick to get into places that have. Uh, it's hard to get a reservation. Yeah, yeah. always yeah. go right to the bar, and you have the immediate service. Yeah, from your first drink to your last with dinner, they're right in front of you. I'm a big fan of eating at the bar as well. I kind of do like it, although I do high tops, a high top table. It's like, dude, I'll fucking spaz. I don't like. <laughs> don't a high I top. fucking hate. I high hate top a high tables. top table. Oh my god, my yes. legs die in like ten seconds. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm my, on back, pins and my back hurts the entire <laughs> yeah. meal. I'm on pins and needles right away. I'm just like, what the fuck's going yeah. on? Yeah, I like I like bar. I mean, I I'm a bar eater if the game if a game's on. True, yeah. but a but if I'm with like a group of four dudes, four people, I don't. It's, I still want a bar. Really? Yeah. I don't mind it because then you can you can you can yeah but then you get stuck next to a shitty friend. That's what end. I'm saying. You can pick your the, the buddy. Yeah, you want. but you get stuck next to a shitty friend that sucks at talking. And you just gotta sit. You know, <laughs> tell him to move. Just yeah, to say move. his name, yeah. dude. <laughs> Could you please move? If you don't start speaking up, I'm gonna fucking scalp you. You should have heard him last night. I couldn't hear anything you said. I just I, yeah. for a while. I was just going. Yeah, yeah, I know. And then you go, Sean. You gotta speak up. And he goes. You might need one of those things, the cigarette the, things in his yeah. throat. <laughs> <It's probably. laughs> Big Billy, it's baby Billy. Gay Bill, straight to nice. I gotta get a suit. Get a bespoke suit. Get a handmade, tailored suit, just for you. Really? Yeah, yeah. Why not? You have millions well. of dollars. Oh. Get a nice suit. Okay, Sam. I'm serious. Don't be a jerk about my. I'm finances. not. I'm very happy for you. I'm saying, get Don't a nice be a jerk garment. about my finances. Oh my god, <laughs> Jesus. I've been in heavy training over here for three days. Oh, yeah. Oh, Why? One-on-one yeah. -on -one with the bull. You keep doing it. I do not do that it. That was not doing it. I will agree that was not doing yes. it. Yes. Which is why I didn't reply with a personal attack. Okay. Well, if you had you to, understand? what would you have said? Now you're asking for a personal attack. No, I'm not. I'm you just said. <laughs> Put me in the pillory. Throw your I don't tomatoes. Want you. I don't want that. I don't like doing that. You love doing that. I genuinely don't. Guard dog, you witnessed it. Night one. He was saying nasty things, and About I responded kindly. Sean, the mic, Sean. Sean the got the business. This. Sean caught the business because I called him a slime eater as soon yeah, as he arrived. Yeah, what is he slime? Slime. slime? I don't know. Jesus he Christ. said he eats slime. He is slime. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. is slime, and he eats slime. He, he called you himself. a slime eater. Yeah. Sean yeah. is the slime eater. Mm -hmm. yep. He called you a slime eater. Slime. Yeah. Yes, he is slime, and he eats slime. He's, he eats mm -hmm. his own stuff. What did you what say you, to that? He said, oh, come I on, said, guys. guys, what are you doing? You're making me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so Sean just got bullied by two big guys. <laughs> uh, and he was, for, like, brutally hung over. <laughs> for a few hours, and then we got to the club, and Sean was being sad, and we were like, what the fuck's your problem? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just talked shit to him for three hours. Yeah, we polluted him. <laughs> oh. I don't well, think neither of us even thought about it. We were both like, what the fuck's his problem? Yeah, come on. It couldn't be us being called him slime for three straight hours <laughs> yeah. saying, you don't belong in this green room what are you doing <laughs> oh that would fucking kill me uh, i honestly dislike it more though when you guys duel i don't like it you don't like to see your parents fight because he goes yeah, he true. goes hard he says nasty things like out of nowhere me <laughs> that is a bold face fib you will see from now on i only respond Oh, oh yeah i'm not mm -hmm. yeah uh, you're yeah. you're fucking palestine no, and no i'm, no, the I'm america Yes, you are. I'm the you United States. It. I'm the United States. Come on, let's go foot to foot. Ew. Come on, look at that thing. <laughs> God, human get foot. that fucking hoof out of here. <laughs> Please defeat I do you. Like, I, I do like the... Uh, what are the tattoos? It says there? joke life on my toes. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, white supremacists gave me those. That's a, Really? In form of payment for rent. He didn't want to be a white supremacist. He was institutionalized early, and when he got out at 22, he was covered in swaths, Damn. and he couldn't pay rent in the house we lived in, so he would give us all tattoos. Nice. So he gave me these toe tattoos, and he dug so deep that they bled, and I had to get the other foot done the day later. And I was like, oh, almost fuck. crying. And he was like, "What's the matter?" And he was, you know, an Aryan Brotherhood. Yeah, you're like nothing. So, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Everything's fine. Don't worry. I'm tough. Yeah. yeah. I'm a How'd tough you end up dude. living with that guy? He was a friend of my sister's. And Did he ever bring up any like decent points that you're like, I'll give you that one? I was like, interesting. I'm swayed. <laughs> hmm. well, a lot of those dudes in the literature, they start very broad in general. Where you're like, yeah, for sure. And right. Slow, they. Make that one jump and leave, mm -hmm. where you're just, or that logic where you're like, "Oh wait, hold up, bro." Yeah, where are you going with that? No, he uh, he was a child 
like still like he had a man's body but he was still treated yeah. as a child's brain because he was perfect victimized so much yeah you oh know God. inside and then eventually he got strong and got the correct tattoos and then all of a sudden yeah, this was i don't he never he never private uh, property basically he never did work as he said really yeah they never didn't put make him work? do work yeah shit mm -hmm. like what like committed yeah 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 heinous murder he's dead now so who cares oh, really? is he oh yeah dang how did he die too much too many ghosts in his psychic past yeah that'll get you mm -hmm. yeah it's... he wasn't fun he had his penis <laughs> uh tattooed with a dragon on it whoa really and he would get hard at parties and show people and the ladies who lived in the punk rock house did not like that <laughs> they didn't like it no it's there was a man with a swa right above he had it right where his bush should be he had a little swastika, swastika. yeah and then he would get his dick out and he had a dragon on it he'd be like check it out he had a high-pitched voice yeah, it does fuck up your dating options. Having a swastika, swastika on your, on your pubes. Yeah. yeah, grow it out. Yeah, grow it out. Go it natural. Show, the bush. True, but then it, you might catch a glimmer of it, like yeah, a, part, yeah. like an old, like in a forest takes over a city. Yeah, you see that little <laughs> glimmer. And you go. What the hell? There were roads here. <laughs> Was there a subway stop here? Yeah, that's a swastika. <laughs> Yeah, they, he should have got him removed. I guess you don't have any money. Yeah, he tough. didn't have any money. He couldn't pay rent. Yeah, it's on the couch. Is he still in the Aryan Brotherhood out of jail? Because I heard it's like difficult to kind of. I I don't think that I, he he was in like Supermax in Colorado. I think he was in Florence and when he got out. Do you remember what he did? Uh, he was dumb shit, and then he went to. He was in jail, and then he got put in prison, and then he was a child, and he had to commit crimes in prison to survive. So yeah. he was just tacked on shit. You know, he was the true victim. Yeah. Yeah. True. That sucks. Yeah. It's no good. Must have been a fun house, though. Did you have a lot of fun? Oh, yeah. It was 16 of us living in an old, uh, like, you, sanitarium. You're a true artist. I was, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was 16 sold out. of you guys? Yeah, we had one bathroom, 16 people. What? We'd have punk rock shows on every floor. We got shut down by the feds. They came in, did a sting, because we would give keg cups out to kids. Damn. Then all these fucking, like, undercover Denver police officers came in wearing social distortion and Dropkick Murphy shirts. <laughs> <laughs> every one of Drop them had the same. They just yeah. fucking... Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> and they just like stood, nodded their heads until they finally and drove fire, police like, cars everybody. over the fences and rounded us all up. Damn. I was the victim of a roundup. Really? Mm-hmm. Is that why you joined the Brotherhood? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I became an Aryan brother. How did you feel getting rounded up? <laughs> I got an underage and became an like Aryan brother. I like cattle. Yeah. <laughs> Spent an hour in a drunk tank and woke up with a swastika tattoo. Dude, I went to jail one time for an unpaid light rail ticket and I cried the whole way in the car. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> After yeah. talking all this shit. I was Dude, like, I did the same thing. Yeah. Did the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I got an underage I, the whole time. The way I think I all of us cried you guys. at the hands of law enforcement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't let me wear shoes. So I had to go in and put on those like jail socks. Yeah, they took my laces. I remember. Mm -hmm. That's crying. That's crying time. Oh, I was weeping in the back. Of the I was so tough in the house. And as soon as I got in there, I was like, "Please, please!" <laughs> yeah, I have to go to college tomorrow. <laughs> I, I hit him with yeah. the old. This stuff always happens to me. Oh yeah, classic. <laughs> Why does this happen to me? Yeah, is that when you're like, "Fuck you guys!" I'll oh, have dude, your I was badge. talking so much shit. I was like, "I was like, what do you guys? You have nothing better to do?" And they're like. Oh, yeah, we were busy. I was like, what are you guys sucking each other's dicks? And they were like, <laughs> yeah. fuck you. We'll kick your ass. I was like, fucking do it. Do it. And like, Damn we it. got five minutes down the road, and I was like, it's not fucking fair. Fuck this. Yeah. You did <laughs> Matt Damon in The Departed. True. You were yeah. like, yeah, who's going to fucking believe you, cocksucker? <laughs> and he got in the elevator. Just fucking kill me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking kill me. <laughs> I was begging for death for one night. <laughs> yeah. I was tough, though. Behind bars, I. Turned Once it you on. got into the slam, oh my god, you knew you dude. had to turn it on. I was rattling the cage, spitting like "fuck you guys." Yeah, I was yeah, nasty. Yeah. It was just me. I was literally the only person in the holding cell. You're a nasty jail. I was being. I, was, I did push ups. I'm not lying. Oh, I was yeah. doing push ups so in there. It's humiliating. I was in there fucking hitting push ups. I was hammered, spitting, and the guy was like, "Knock it off." I'm like, "Come on this side and see what the fuck you're in there." It's like, all right, dude. Damn. All Damn. right, dude. It must have felt good though while you were drunk. It was just being so. Like, tight. I am fifty cent. It was so tall, for sure. I know that I'm 50 Cent now. It, dude, it for real felt amazing. Yeah. To be in there and be like, come on this side of the fucking cage. Yeah, dude. get over here, motherfucker. He's like, I go in there all the time. Put people in there. <laughs> yeah, all right, dude. Yeah, I was shit. terrified because when you go to Denver County Jail, you have to sign a document when they check you in that says, you won't rape, and if you do rape, you won't take a shower so they can collect <laughs> the evidence out of your holes. And that was like the first thing I had to sign when I was in there. Oh, God. And then they put me in a cell with like an ancient black man. And I just sat on the lower bunk, stayed up all night reading the Bible. That's what's up. Yeah, because I was so scared that I was going to be used and then collected. True. Yeah. Yeah, I was in the drunk tank. Mine was like really chill. I had like a drunk tank to myself. Really? It was tight. 
the they big had, like, small collection, cells. the collecting part would be pretty dehumanizing. Oh yeah, well that's well, why they spit in each other's butts now in jail. Yeah. Although it'd be nice once once they get that out of you, I'd be like. There will be justice. Yeah, mm -hmm. finally justice. They're swabbing serve. my butt. I'd be like, he's gonna go to jail. Justice. Fuck, he's already in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's in here and he's forever. loving every minute. Of it. Yeah, he's, yeah, fucking he's flourishing. Yeah, the lawyers like so. It looks like you just have AIDS now. Really, yeah, right. so right. I there's don't nothing know. we can really do. To and him. also, you kind of tattled, so there's they're gonna kill you. They're uh, gonna really start raping you. A but lot. at least they can't rape you anymore because you got AIDS. True. Okay, Mr. Brightside. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would that would suck too. Getting raped in prison because you're like, you, there'd be a part of it where you're like. <laughs> It's really like this. I didn't think it would actually, yeah. actually. I thought it was yeah. just like the movies. It's like you're being punked. You literally <laughs> are being punked, I guess. Yeah. 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 In the truest sense of the word. Yeah. That'd be the worst part of it is uh, realizing that it was right. It's real. Like, yeah. This yeah. is actually, this isn't. Wouldn't be the violent voice. sodomy. Yeah. And it's so close to being so chill. Yeah. yeah. Just like guys' time. The bros. Out. Sports. Just basketball tournaments. We're the only place that does that, too. In the rest of the world, for the most part, they look it's down guys upon time. buggery. Yeah. yeah, they don't. Yeah, they don't do that to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched uh, weird. some YouTube videos about like I think it's Filipino jails. Oh yeah, they're just houses. Yeah, just giant. Really? Not like houses like this, but it's like a giant. It, it's hell. It sucks. I, yeah, obviously yeah. it's a Filipino prison, but I read like, a memoir about a Thai guy who went there. Really? Yes. And what he happened? said, "Well, I think he was actually Filipino. Went to Thai prison, and he said that the highlight of his entire time there was the day they rounded up cockroaches and made a paste to eat." Damn. Been there for seven years for like right, smuggling so as fun as you think. But. They, Denmark's like that though. Like I know in Scandinavia yeah. they have prisons yeah. where they have like guitars yeah, a little and shit. IKEA and house. Chill. Yeah. yeah. And all the everyone there has like eaten their little brother. Like there's no petty crime there. Everyone is like cannibalizes. When those well. Scandinavians go <laughs> yeah, bad, dude. they go real bad. I know. Yeah. They yeah. They just like you can play guitar, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I ate my family. <laughs> you guys can practice enter Sandman if you'd like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that shit's fucking terrifying. Uh, there's a movie. There's a kickboxer movie out about a guy in Thai jail. He's like an emerit one of those like Last Samurai type movies. It's like a white guy. He's like he's like a kickboxer gets caught in jail and they have like a kickboxing tournament. And if you win, you get to get out of the tournament or you get to get out of the jail if you win the tournament. But he falls in love with like a lady boy in prison. Whoa, fuck! It's fuck it sounds up. awesome. It's, it's dude, it sounds film. fuck. I haven't seen it. That. Someone told me about it. it sounds fucking Damn. tight. And he falls deeply in love with a lady boy in prison. That's good though to let out the one guy who can beat up everybody. That's a criminal. Yeah, like let him out. I know. Put him back on the streets. Put him back in the yeah. The guy who's going to be the biggest problem. Well, they, I guess 